Father. Ready? Now stop, off, surrender off. <clears throat> Ready, y'all? Lord, we know, God, that starting tomorrow, his life will change forever. 
And we thank you, Lord, but he's got such a heart for you, Lord, and such a heart to serve this country. And I thank you for that. Bless him, Lord. Use him in a very powerful way. Protect him. Put your hands around him and guide him in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. And we thank you for what you're doing through him and for him in the name of Jesus. As you touch Jeannie right now, Lord, as you touch Lord, our, our, our daughters and our sons, Lord, bless them in a very powerful way. Touch Michael's leg, touch his back. Lord, in the name of Jesus, they can feel your relief. We thank you for it. In your overwhelming, overpowering, unsurrendering name of names, we thank you for a healing touch right now. In the name of Jesus, touch Barbara too, Lord. We know you got this and we trust you with it. In the name of Jesus. Give Lord a hand clap. Isn't God good? I've got a chance to 
to pastor, counsel, and work with many, many, many military people and from all kinds of conflicts from World War II to uh, uh, Korea, Vietnam, and uh, Desert Storm, and stuff out in Afghanistan. And I actually got the opportunity to work with a couple of drill sergeants. And every drill sergeant told me that in the very beginning, when those guys got off the bus, they were the hated, most hated men in the world. They said, but after it was all over with, and they were out, they were out of boot camp, <clears throat> that their guys would send them gifts later on and thank them for helping them prepare to stay, and save their life many, many times because they listened to what that drill instructor taught them. And so I think about that also in our own life. Things that you go through now, you're trained. You don't even realize you're being trained. And, and God is just awesome like that. Amen? You know, my quiet today. I know it's hot. Isn't it? But, you know, it's going to look. Just remember, just remember, if you're a Christian, it's the only hill you'll ever see. But if, this, if you're not a Christian, it's the only heaven you'll ever see. God's got this. All right. I read this, I've used this joke before, but in a different context and a different different kind of set of punchlines. So this is the new book, Vicky. She's the one first one to say burn the books. So I'm going to tell you. This is from a new book. All right. Mrs. P. Jones, and this is Jones too. <laughs> Mrs. P. Jones came to the newsroom to pay for her husband's obituary. She was told by the kindly newsman that it was a dollar per word. And he remembered Pete and wasn't and it wasn't it too bad about him passed away. She thanked him for his kind of words and bemoaned the fact that she only had two dollars. So she wrote on the obituary, Pete died. The newsman said he thought a lot about old Pete, and old Pete deserved more of that, so she he gave her three more dollars. So she could have three more words. So she thanked him and she rewrote the obituary, and Pete died, vote for sale. <laughs> that was touching. <laughs> Any God good? All the time. All right. God is good all the time. We're gonna we're gonna get your, get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Turn to Philippians chapter two. Stand for the reading of the word. We still have one more week. I'm taking it kind of slow and not kind. I'm taking it slow and easy. I'm trying to get that word kind of out of my mouth, but people got a bad habit of saying, I'm kind of doing this, and I'm kind of, you know, kind of like, I'm kind of, kind of, and I'm thinking, no, if you shot that deer, you're not kind of shooting, if you shot it. Amen? If you kind of, so I'm trying to get that word kind of out, except for in proper context. So, we are going through this, and we're going to take our time, because it's very, very important. Amen? Philippians chapter 2. Verse 1, I'm not building a new you. This is all part of spiritual warfare. It's very powerful and it's very needed, especially in this last day and time. Uh, you never realize until you, right, until you get in the middle of the battle just how much you need this stuff. Amen? So, Philippians chapter 2. If therefore there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy that you may be like minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in likeness of men. And being found in fashion of him as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto, unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him <clears throat> and given him a name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Stretch forth your hands this way, Father. We thank you, Lord, this day. We thank you, God, for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your touch. Lord, churches and families and communities, we all seem to go through periods 
and seasons. We went through a couple of years ago seasons of death. We went through seasons of victory. And this season right here seems to be a season of people being sick, Lord. But God, you showed yourself strong in every last, in every last thing. You showed yourself strong. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that although we have a lot of sick folk today, we know, God, that you're more powerful than any sickness on this earth. That that sickness is going to bow to Jesus' name. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, to anoint us. Help us, God, to understand that these are just seasons and that they will pass. The next season coming along will be an awesome season. Use that to uh, a tough winter will come an awesome spring. And Lord, we know that it's going to, after the season of sickness, Lord, it's going to come a season of health. And we thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord. We know, Lord, there's a lot of people who are not feeling good right now. But we also know, God, that you're in control. You knew this was coming. It didn't take you by surprise. Touch us all and help us all to look to you and to trust you for what you're going to do in our life. And we thank you, God, for everything that you do for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's just go through. Y'all can be sitting here. Way down and tell somebody, if you're not here after, what well, I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. Tell me. All right. This is I'm gonna go, kind of good. I'm going to go. I'm trying to say kind of. Get that kind of out of. Kind of gone. Got to see. Got that kind of gone. Okay. I am kind of crazy. That, that, that's in context. Okay. kind of. All right. Building a new year, we're going to go a little bit over what we did, went over last week, and we're going to jump on in. And you understand, last week, we actually talked about ants, and we talked about automatic negative thoughts. So we're going to take it another step today, and we're going in another direction. But again, it's the same scripture, different directions, and you'll understand it when we get going. So bear with me as we go through this thing. God is so good all the time. God is good. So again, have you ever fallen into a spiritual rut? The thing about a spiritual rut is you're miserable because you're uncomfortable. You can't go anywhere. He's trying his best to hold on. There may be somebody here today, either in here or listening on Facebook, that you're doing your best to hold on. I mean, you, you, you give it all you got. You're going as hard as you can go. And still, you find yourself in a rut. And you're, you're uncomfortable because you can't go anywhere. You're obstructed. You're hindered. Uh, every time you're trying to move, you're too busy trying to hold on. Somebody say, sometimes we get too busy trying to hold on. Say it. That's right. But not only that, but, but we're hopeless because it seems like there's no way out. So, so what's left, and this happens all the time, I find myself doing it, and you can't do this, is when you get lame from all this, it's easy to blame somebody. We don't need to be blaming anybody. There is definitely reasons, and we can look at the reason, we can observe the reason, and then we can move beyond the reason. But don't just sit back and try to find somebody to blame, because blame does nothing. Discovering the reason and repairing it will fix it. Okay? So, so if you, all you're going to do is if you blame somebody, it's going to be more of the same. So, again, this is from last week. We're trying to, trying to go through this. I'm not going to stop. See, the guy's in the hole, but he's giving the shovel to somebody else. You're giving it to somebody else's responsibility to dig him out. No, it's not. you got to realize that if you're going to get out of this, then you're going to have a big part to play. And your big part to play is going to be your attention, what we see, our attitude, how we think about it, and our actions, okay, how to respond. So, again, moving on, moving on quickly because I can't wait to get this, this new one here uh, today. So, still, building a better you, the Bible was just read, and it said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2 and 5. And, of course, that word mind means to think, but not only does it mean to think, if you take it and really dig down deep, that word mind means attitude. What, what kind of attitude you got? If you got a positive attitude, you got a negative attitude, you got a get by attitude, you got this just mediocre attitude, somebody gonna take care of me attitude. What, what's your attitude? You just got a bad attitude. So let this attitude be something constant. It's not gonna be shaken, being you, personal. I would like to think that no matter how bad situations got, that I can still keep my good attitude. And of course, I keep going back to Bethany, but Bethany, bless her heart, she went through some rough, rough, rough times. 
And I remember even when uh, she was burned up from radiation, and I was trying to put that tape on her to cover those two tumors that were the size of my two fists from her side, and I was moving, putting baby diapers up there. And I remember as I was trying to pull that off, and I used the best tape I could find, the, the easiest to, to take away off her body, but she would burn up from that radiation. And I said, dear, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she said, Daddy, you got to do this. She said, just do me a favor, just go do it. And, I go, and I'd be the one crying. I mean, I'd see her, she would, she'd, there'd be times she would just go, and she'd go, oh. and I looked and I see a tear, but she said, keep on, Daddy, keep on, we're getting close, we're getting close. And, and I'd be the one in tears, and I'm thinking, I'm hurting her so bad. But she had such a good attitude about the whole thing. She said, Daddy, it's okay. You have to do this. It's going to be okay. God's got this. Okay, so, Jesus' attitude toward others was that he was a servant. And his attitude toward himself was, is, is again, I've got no problem with it. attitude towards you is, I'm your servant. And when I look inside, I don't, or it's what he said, I'm not arguing about it. Or if you ever help somebody, and you're on the outside, you're going, yeah, 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 I'm ready to help you. But on the inside, you're going, I wish I had done that. You ever done that? Okay, Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus knew what he was doing and when to do it. So, again, get ready, get, get ready to get out of here and get into, into this week. Quit looking for somebody to blame, something to blame, but look inside of you and take some responsibility. Okay? And this is cool. Again, I, I, I had a blank page up there because I didn't have it put up, so I put this up this week. From the lost book of the Bible called Yevon. From the prophet Yevon. Amen? Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but the prophet Yevon yeah, says anything, anything <coughs> before but doesn't really matter. If you're apologizing to somebody, and I've had people do this to me, I've done it myself, and I go, I'm sorry, but you just ruined your apology. Well, I was going to get this done for you, but and give excuses or blame, you just well left out what you said to start with. And just go in, hey, this is sorry. I can't work with this. Instead of going, well, I was going to do it, but I'm sorry, but leave the but out, say I'm sorry. Try it sometimes, just go, I'm sorry. And then realize before you say you're sorry what you actually did, say, I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings and leave it alone. Try it sometime. I'm sorry that I lost my patience with you and just leave it alone. I'm sorry that I got agitated with you and leave it alone. Because if you're not careful, you say, I'm sorry that I got agitated with you, but you know how you are. You put the blame back on me. Just learn how to do that. Leave the yeah, but out of here, okay? So here's a new challenge. Take this sentence, I meant to, but out of your vocabulary. Now, here's our little fellows. You remember these little fellows from last week? The ants, the automatic negative thoughts. I gotta give her I can read some of them. Now, have you thought of any of these this week? Is any of these things come on your mind this week? Automatic negative thoughts. You, you're doing something and and while you're doing it, you're expecting one thing, you get another, or or Satan starts talking to you, or flesh starts beating you up, and while you're working, here's what you say. If somebody Somebody said something that hurt your feelings. He's always putting me down. I'm so stupid. Anybody said that? Please don't raise your hand. I won't get this done on time. I just won't even try. You never listen to me. Nobody can love me. I feel like staying in bed, but I should go to the gym. I'm a failure. I'm so annoying. Nobody understands me. Why well, try? I'm awful at this. I shouldn't cry. She always did say hello. Oh, she didn't say hello. She must hate me. I shouldn't get upset over this. I'm so annoying. No one understands me. No one ever listens to me. Have you said that just this week? Has that been your automatic response when you find things going the wrong way? That's called automatic negative thoughts. And if it stays, it's an automatic negative thought syndrome. And it will kill you dead in the door now. It will kill your attitude. It will kill your spirituality. It will kill your thought process. 
It will destroy you. It will wrap you up tighter than the rat that put these, and you won't get out of it. you got to learn how to break this pattern. So, God knew this was coming. So he wrote, he wrote in the Bible about this, okay? Here it is. Take better thoughts. Summing it all up, friends. I say you'll do the best by filling your minds and mediating or meditating on these, on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not to curse, put into practice what you learned from me, what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. So first, think better thoughts. Hear better sounds. Learn how to say this. When you start hearing those negative thoughts, when the ants start marching, the ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, the last one made me suck my thumb, but they all went marching. Okay. Y'all ever sang that song? <laughs> That's a, that didn't even in the old book. That was before the old book was written. All right. Always go back to the Word when you got these negative thoughts and see what the Word says about you. Okay? So faith comes by hearing, and that is hearing the good news, the good news about Christ. So now here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. You ready? I didn't realize you were going tomorrow, bro. But I thought about you because to me that's what you look like. You're a bad dude. You hear me? You're a bad, bad man. So, there's David going up against Goliath. Goliath is in the fog because, you know why? Because the focus is not on Goliath. The focus is on David and God. If you focus on your giants, you stumble. Say it to me. If you focus on your giants, you stumble. If you focus on your God, your giants will stumble. Say that. If you focus on your God, your giants stumble. You have a choice to make. Amen? So, think about this. So we see better, we see better sights. Looking, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12 and 2. Now, get ready. Many people look for bad in everybody. Some people could pick a problem from 50 faces. They're good, people, they're good problem finders. They're good fault finders. And there's some people that are fault finders that complain. Some people complain so much that they get paid for it. Many people look for bad and evil in circumstances, seeing only their faults and the dignities. Wow. Have you done anybody like that? Do not point. Do not raise your hand. In order to be a better person, it requires a better positive perspective. Positive doesn't mean that you're shooting skittles everywhere. It doesn't mean rainbows and all this stuff. Positive means I'm reinforced by the Word of God. And even in the negative, it's positive if it's the Word of God. I can trust it. I can lean on it. I can depend on it because God gives it. So, it requires a better positive perspective. And look, learning to look to Jesus. You have to train yourself to look at Jesus in every, every situation. Now, now, now let's, here we go. We get ready to dig in now. Got ready to do some digging. Let's dig. He says to be like a child. Look to God. Be, have a childlike faith. Not childish, childlike faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Let's get ready. Get ready. Let's look at a different version of this. Amplified. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. One more verse. 
Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race. Green. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could pick up with any, could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever, and now he's there in a place of honor, right along beside God. Now, I want you to, let me move one more step and then we're going back to the bridge, all right? This, this is the cool part. Don't read that. <laughs> Y'all say that together. Be sure to taste your words before you spit them out. Amen. How many times have you said something that sounded better in your head than it did when it came out? All right. Be sure to taste your words. Matter of fact, if you give me a talk to somebody, it might be better not just in your head. If you're going to talk to somebody and and your wonder is going to come out right before you get to that person, spit them out. Taste them. Spit them out somewhere else where nobody's around. Find somebody you trust and say, how does this sound? And you'd say it, and then that person can tell you, or just say, God, you got to show me, and just say it. Because once you say it and hear it with your ears, is a whole lot different when you hear it with your ears out of your mouth than when you hear it with your internal ear in your head. It's two different, two different things. So get ready for get to a bridge. We're going to do the bridge in just a minute. Speak better words. Psalm 105 and 2 says, Talk all you want of his wondrous works. Most people honestly love to talk about evil and bad events. Uh, some are harsh, unkind, and to take God's name in vain. I remember when I was working at Brighton and Gamble, uh, I, they were having our six month. Uh, I called it judgment. <laughs> but they, they got around the table, they were, they were, they were ranking, putting where they, where they ranked, you know, in the teams. And they would talk about each person individually, and there was like 15 guys in there, guys and gals, and they, the, the leaders, the big leaders, the big guys, they were in there. And I've been saved now for right many years, and I was already doing some ministry, and I was doing singing, playing, you know, so I was out a lot with that, and I, and people were coming to me. I weren't going to them. They were coming to me asking me questions. How can I get this done? How can I help this? And then my family, my family, my child. And, uh, and so I never stopped working, but I would talk to them about it. We'd go to the break room, and they would ask me in the break room. And we would talk about the break room. Now, next to me, they were talking all kinds of junk. I mean, all grades of junk. Y'all know how it goes. I mean, a lot of, a lot of junk. Uh, about uh, what kind of new stuff they were trying, what they were doing, how they were running out of their wives and their husbands, and, and all this stuff. And, and so when it come back in time, nobody said a word about what those other people were saying. And when it came to me, they said, David's works in Bethlehem. He, 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 he's awesome. I said, but he likes to talk about non-work related stuff. I want that. And the wildest thing was the guy that spoke up for me was a Mormon elder. And the Mormon elder spoke up and said, I can't believe you all doing this. Said, 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 David, he's not instigating, they're coming to him. And said, and he's not talking the same junk. He said, I hear it there all the time about who's running out on whose wife and who's taking what kind of drugs and, and who got drunk this weekend and where they stayed and blah, 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 blah. He said, you hear it all over the place. It never stops. And said, the one right out hopes you're going to sit down here beside David and you get to hear this and said, and y'all going to, y'all going to crucify him because it's not related work. What about all non work related talk at the break table? He said, what about all these other people with the stuff they said? And he said, if you're going to take, if you're going to move his rank down, then this, now this one got a big guy. He was way up there on the ladder. He said, if you're going to take him down, you take me down too, because I don't have a part of this. Take me down too, because this is ridiculous. He says, all I've got to do is y'all, y'all can't stand the conviction. Take me down too. And they went, whoa, we're sorry. And that, that, that never came up again. Why? I'm not going to be talking at the break room. Not on the floor, at the break room. And so, so, 
It's amazing how God used somebody that didn't even believe the way that I believed and used him to shut off Satan because as long as I was talking about but before I got saved, as long as I was talking about the evil stuff and the bad events and I was harsh and unkind and took the Lord's name in vain, nobody ever said a word when I started talking good things. Satan got so, so, so upset. So look, remember this. We should talk positively. We should be seeking the glory of God. We need to make sure that our words are words of encouragement. That when we talk, we bring healing words. You, you will never know just how much just a smile can bring healing. Just a smile. Yeah, you know, I, I was walking in the nursing home yesterday. And there was a new lady behind the desk, and and she was she was trying to get her stuff done, and 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 I could tell that she was having little complications, and and, and there was some stuff going on, and all in, and I'd never seen this lady before, and uh, so I'm going in, and I said uh, I want I want to see uh, Ben Rush. She said, "Go well, sign in," and I'm signing in. I'm signing in as I'm signing in. Uh, I look over and I see it, and I go. Watch this. I sensed it. And I said, God, help me be encouraging today. God, help me to say something to bring you in. And so I looked at her and said, you know what? She said, what? I said, I see you glowing with God. And she stopped what she and she looked up at me, and I saw a smile and a tear. And I said, you know what? They put you in the right place. Because people come in here hurting, and they get to see you first. And you, you shine. You glow with God. And she just broke right on up. I mean, and I, and it was just amazing. You know, I didn't get in there and make a big old speech. And anyway. I just said a few couple of words. And then I'd go out, and I'd come back in. When I come back in, when she saw me, she started smiling. And I said, I said, see, you're going again. And she said, thank you so much. I really needed to hear that. Then I even said this too. I said, well, you know, y'all heard me say it a million times. I said, well, you know, everybody's got an opportunity to make a difference, you know. Each person's got, a, got the opportunity to make a room light up. She said, really? I said, yes, yeah, some by entering it and some by leaving it. <laughs> and she just got laughed. She said, you're going down here now. I said, all right. All right. So now, ask God to help you speak words of encouragement when you're around people. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now it's time for the bridge. Are you ready for the bridge? I want to talk about a radio station. Ready? We're going to bridge right now, and this is what I've been waiting for. There's a connection in everybody. There's a divine connection in the senses. But there's a special connection with sight and output sound. I'm not talking about sound here, what you're hearing. Sight, and this is included. Sound coming in, but sight and sound coming out. This and this is very, very very, very powerful. Let me read something to you. You can turn it if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. I don't have it up here. Numbers 13, 25 and 33. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And when they came to Moses and to Aaron, they're getting ready to go to the promised land. And when they went and came to Moses, now they've seen all these plagues. They've seen the ten plagues. They've seen the plagues tear in Egypt, the most powerful nation in the world, that's all the most powerful army in the world, destroyed. They walked through the they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground and then watched it come back down and destroy an army. So now, he picks out a member of every tribe, a leader of every tribe of the twelve tribes, and sends them over to the promised land. And when they come back from the promise and they search for 40 days, and they're said to give a report. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And when they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, 
and to all the congregation of the children of Israel. Remember, sites. And unto the wilderness of Aaron took Kadesh and brought back word unto the began sound unto all the congregation and showed sites the fruit of the land. And when he told him to say, Whether he came into the land which thou sentest, surely it flows of milk and honey, and this is the fruit thereof. Grapes were so big that they had to put them on a pole between them to carry a cluster of grapes. Very, very powerful. Here it is. Here's from the book of Yevit. It's just like he told us. It's full of milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Sight. Get ready. Nevertheless. Never see nevertheless. Many times it is Yevit. Yevit. The people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are wild and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. They're everywhere! How many got problems everywhere? <laughs> everywhere you turn around, you got a problem popping up. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. If Caleb stilled the people were calling them down, it means the people were getting crazy. Sound. And, and they carried, still the people before Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we are. But are they stronger than God? Your situations may be overcoming you, and they may be stronger than you can handle, but they have overcome God. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which when they had searched the children, children, the children of Israel, saying, The land to which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw there in it are men of great stature. They were giants. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. Here it is. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. They saw what they saw. They didn't bathe it in the promise of God. They didn't bathe it in the purpose of God. They bathed it in what they could see. <laughs> and once they saw it and the sound came out, guess what? And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Here it is. And let me read it one more time in a different version, then we're going to talk a little bit. After four days of scouting out the land, they returned home. They presented themselves before Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran Kadesh. They reported to the whole congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told them the story of their trip. We went to the land where you sent us. Oh, it does flow with milk and honey. Look at it. This is the fruit. The only thing is, yeah, but the people who live there are fierce. Their cities are huge and well fortified. Worse than that, we saw the descendants of the giant Anak. And, and the Amalekites are spread out to Negev. Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites hold the hill, hill country. And the Canaanites are established on the Mediterranean Sea and among the, along the Jordan. Caleb interrupted, called for signs before Moses, said, let us go up and take the land now. We can do it. What's the difference? Ten of the spies were comparing what they saw to their own ability. Joshua and Caleb saw the same exact thing, but they were not comparing it to them. They were comparing it to him. What you got going on today? What's the problems that you're facing? Are you comparing it to what you've got, or are you comparing it to what God's got? Matter of fact, they compared the giants to them, and they compared God to the giants. There's a big difference. But the others said, we cannot attack these people, for they are stronger than we are. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scout out land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people whole. 
Everybody we saw there was huge. Why, we even saw the Nephilim giants, the Anic giants came from Nephilim. Along beside them, we felt like grasshoppers. And they looked down on us as if we were grasshoppers. Number one. Write it down. I don't have it up here. Write it down. How you see your God affects how you see your problems. Number one. Number two. How you see your God affects how you see you. And how you see your God affects how others see you. Number one, we can't take the land. They're too big. They're giants. It shows how they saw their God. I was bigger than those giants. Number two, and we were grasshoppers in our own eyes. How they saw their God affected how they saw their self. And we were also like grasshoppers in their eyes. How you see God and how you see yourself is how others see you. Wow. This report was negative, it was divisive. And it was a defeatist attitude that spread like wildfire. These people were so excited about what God could do, but it's amazing how negative can take a hold and start roots in us. You see, Numbers 13 starts with this what they saw. And it was defeated by what they say about what they saw. That's the bridge. Today, what are you seeing? What's the problems? What's happening in your life? We got a lot of sickness. It's hot. The economy's gone crazy. People have gone crazy. What you see. But not only what you see, what do you say? Because if it's not tempered with the Word of God, wow, something negative is going to take place, and your words will be divisive and negative and be full of defeat. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. There's one whose rash words are like sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Let me ask you a question. This is what was the Lord's last from last week. But building a better you, honestly, it's going to be awesome. Because when you work on yourself, you work on your marriage. When you work on yourself, you work on your family. When you work on yourself, you work on your church. When you work on yourself, you work on your workplace. Yes, there's a lot of things here that drive me nutty. A lot of things here will bring fear into your heart. But here, the Word of God's got to dwell. If the Word of God don't dwell there, there's a problem. So now, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I said, getting ready, folks, okay? Brandon, you can get ready to start playing something, bro. Here's this week's challenge. Last week's challenge was how to attack the ants. This week's challenge. Whenever you feel that your focus is off, it's powerful. Whenever you feel your focus is off, let me, let me I want to read something. Very, very, very powerful. Philippians 3, 
13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I, one thing I do, forget those things which are behind, and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of Jesus. And now remember, one of the most important parts of your armor, spiritual warfare, the 90%. Actually, doesn't come as armor to put on you. What it is is your focus. Your focus can either be your greatest ally or it can be your greatest enemy, your own focus. There's one thing I do. Paul had all this stuff behind him. He had good stuff behind him, bad stuff behind him. You know, for focus, I, I just, I'm going to show you something else right now for this moment. If fixed. For focus, if fixed. This one thing I do. Amen. Matter of fact, let's look at it in the New Living Translation. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all that I should be, but I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Okay, fixed. Zero or uh, uh, zero, but O, uh, one thing. I'm fixed on one thing. C, Christ. You, untangle. Simplify. It's one thing. I do. I strain to reach to the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, the Christ Jesus, is calling us up into heaven. Stretch, S is stretch. I'm reaching forth. Now, here it is. You find yourself this week, your focus is off. You got your mind on somebody else, something else, whatever's happened. You got your mind on what's going on. And you're looking and you're seeing things. And it's amazing how, you know, all right, think about this. You got your mind set. You get ready. Let's just say you got a handicap sticker in your car because you you actually are legitimately driving a handicapped car that you are handicapped and you're getting ready to pull in to the drugstore and there's one handicapped spot and as you pull in as you're getting ready to pull you got your signal light on and a car comes racing up in the parking lot and pulls right in this only place the only spot in the whole place it's a handicapped spot, you've got a handicap sticker, and this young dude comes up and squeals on brakes and goes in that spot and jumps out and runs in the drugstore. Get curious. I know with the handicap sticker, there's no other place in the park, and this young dude just thinks he can just go to whatever he wants to. He can take a handicap spark space and all this. Who does he think he is anyway? Your focus is all right. Because you find out later that his baby was burning up with the fever. And the doctor put medicine at the drugstore and said he must get this medicine in him immediately or he's going to have to come to the hospital and may even lose him. And so that was a young father going up to the, going up to the drugstore, trying to hurry up and get in there and get that medicine and come back out and take it to his child so his child won't die. It's amazing. Focus. Focus. Perspective. So, so here. You find folks getting off, it's time to realign your focus. Here it is. If. Full attention. Again, it's one thing I do. Full attention. O. On. C. Christ. You. With unwavering trust. With unwavering trust. In all that I do, yes, in every situation. Try this this way. Get your focus back. Watch what God can do when you get your focus back. Because there's so many things out there trying to drag us away, trying to get our focus broke, trying to mess up our minds, trying to get us in all kinds of situations that we haven't missed being in because our focus has been broken. When you do this, you put your full attention on Christ, with unwavering trust in all situations, this, this, this will shift your focus to the positive and put it back in Christ's hands.
Jeg kan godt lide det. Vær rum og ved. Nu må vi blive det. Lad os lade os handle the hands. Lad os blive. This week is our focus on the sea. How we react. God is doing something special for us. You may say, well, you know what? I'm going through a tough time in my life right now, and I, I ain't hearing it. But just remember this. In school, whenever the teacher gave us a test, the teacher always remained silent. Whenever you find yourself facing something that's beyond you, indicative that God has got you in test. And when you pass this test, comes promotion, there comes reward. But you've got to trust him. Your focus. You've got to keep your focus. you got to keep your focus. Every head bowed, Every eye closed. Nobody looking around. Come on, start with us right here. Every, every altar call, wherever I'm at. There's somebody here today that says, you know what? <laughs> I let my focus get broken. And instead of drawing me to God, it drove me away from God. And I actually can really stand to be getting my focus back on God. But first I've got to get back with Him because I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I want to be. I need Him. That's what Paul just said. I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I want to be. But I'm going to keep on pressing you're here today and said to get closer to God, I, I find myself drifting because my focus is broken. I need to get closer to God. Nobody looking around at God. Close every head by the foot of hands of every pastor. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Maybe you're here today. you got got it going on, but your focus. Satan knows his tactics. Remember the 10%? Part of that 10% is getting your focus in the wrong direction, breaking your focus. If he can break your focus, he can put a whip it on you. If you're here this morning, Pastor, I, I just realized, I see it, I understand it now. I see it. He's trying to break my focus. And I'm not going to let him do it with God's help. That 10% is here. I see it. But God, me and God got 90%. Matter of fact, God's got it all, but he puts part of it in my hands. I got to want it. I got 90, I got to respond. I see my focus being broken, and I want to get it back. Crazy, crazy thing this week. You can look up in just a minute. Crazy, crazy thing. I literally thought I was starting to go blind because I had one time had 2011 vision. I could see, I could tell if it was a male or a female gnat on the floor. Over the years, it started getting a little different. It's 2020. And in the last couple of years, I know it started getting worse, but I started having problems with bright lights at night. And so I go to the eye doctor this week, and they said, Well, your bright eyes 2030. But you 2011, I reckon 2030 is not too bad for people to say, that's good. No, I thought it was a little blind. They said, this eye was 2050. 
I said, yeah. I said, but that's even worse. And she said, I bet you're having problems at night. I said, yes, I am. But she said, you got cataracts developing, especially in the left eye. And she put me in that machine gun and started adjusting it. And it's amazing what I could see. Well, wow, this is awesome. This is how it used to be. <laughs> I thought about that. And actually, right now, you ever had it done for you? Put your eyes in there and the doctor do a ground? Well, guess what I'm doing right now? I've got your face up to that thing, and I'm doing this with God's Word. And the decision's yours if you're going to buy a prescription or not. I could walk a little way. Walk into the wall. So, I'll be wearing glasses next week instead of readers. But it said, you're not bad enough to be operated on, you just have to put up with it a little bit longer, and then we're going to fix your eyes for a cataract. Not yet. But you'll at least be able to see. I said, that would be so, so awesome. Some of y'all, by adjusting your focus today, may not take care of all the problems. But they should be able to see. How many in here want God to help you sharpen your focus? Let's pray. Now pray with me. Father, I love you. I praise you. I thank you for your grace, for your mercy. And I thank you, God, that you see us where we're at. You meet us where we're at. And you promise not to leave us like you found us. I need you, God, to adjust my focus. To get it back to you. I learn to speak it. Your word. And it's resting. Because there are giants in the land. But they're not bigger than you. They're bigger than me, but they're not bigger than you. Help me get my focus off the giants and on you. And I thank you for it right now. May God draw me close, closer than ever been. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give Lord a hand. We say Lord's Prayer, no brother Wayne that dismisses the prayer. Ready? Who brought us here? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the priest's peace. Thy name is our Dear God, it's a pleasure and honor to be able to come before thee this morning, our great friend and Father. Thank you for the mercy and grace you pour out upon us. Thank you for the help that you give us, Lord. Father, we ask you to keep us all focused this week, Father, from here on out, Lord. Number one, thank you. You're the, the only reason that we're allowed to stay here on this earth, Father. You're the one that gives us life and more than takes life from us. Father, we ask a special blessing on all those that are sick. Are under the weather, Father, if we know you can reach your hand down and touch them, Lord, and heal them. We're calling them on you, Lord. Be with us now and bring us back up next to the time. This and all things I'll always ask you, Son's name, Jesus Christ. And to all this I say, Amen and Amen. amen.